Footprints can tell you a number of things about the imprinter, such as its size and how it stood, ran, or walked. Spotting tracks can be a mystery to solve, yet it may quickly become an experience that turns frightening and potentially deadly. Do you trust your ability to identify prints? A positive ID can put you at ease, but the unknown can bring on a sudden wave of terror. Light snow or firm mud is some of the best medium to capture the movement and enlighten you to the creatures around you. I've come across wolf tracks that were relatively fresh and discovered a large buck across my path just after I had passed. These are the trace signs of history, be it now or millions of years ago. Footprints are evidence of behavior, scientifically sometimes called trace fossils, geological evidence of biological activity without a body. In Africa, hundreds of fossilized human prints made between five and 19,000 years ago have been unearthed. The footprints were made in a volcanic mud flow and when that wet ash dried, it hardened almost like concrete, according to Kevin Atala, study author and assistant professor of biology at Chatham University in Pennsylvania. Researchers believe that the 408 footprints, which form 17 different tracks, belong to 14 adult females, two adult males, and one juvenile male. In 2018, researchers uncovered 29 human footprints that are estimated to be 13,000 years old on British Columbia's Calvert Island. Chances are you will not stumble upon these ancient tracks, but ones of more recent origin. The difference between footprint and track, when used as nouns, footprint means the impression of the foot in a soft substance, such as sand or snow, whereas track means a mark left by something that has passed along. John Stokes in 1974 wrote, quote, The earth is a manuscript being written and unwritten every day. The Pine Barrens are a geological track. The Mississippi River is a track. And so are the Rocky Mountains. The track, print, geology is made and then slowly worn down or built upon by the forces of natural erosion and gravity. Gravity ultimately wants everything to be at the same level. A track is the Earth's reaction to your passing over it. From each passing, there are a series of concentric rings that ripple out. The track itself is one such ring. So is the call of the Blue Jay that scolds you as you walk beneath his tree. In the 1978 book, The Tracker, written by Tom Brown Jr. as told to William John Balkins, quote, tracking is like learning to read. First you start with the ABCs, then you work up to simple sentences, then to paragraphs, and finally to books. Ultimately, with practice, you can read very difficult books with a great deal of hidden meaning. He goes on to say, a track is a window to the past of an animal. Look at the ground as if it were a manuscript of the animal's life. Every pock, hill, dome, etc. is the track of something. A dent in the forest may be the track of a fallen branch. So basically, the first thing to learn about tracking is knowing where to look for animals. Much of this is done by what is called sign tracking. Signs are anything besides a track proper that is an indication of an animal, e.g. trails, scat, etc. About half of tracking is sign tracking. The other half is working with actual tracks. I would encourage you to read the article by Rick Curtis located at outdooraction.princeton.eu for a more comprehensive introduction to the art of animal tracking. He covers large-scale signs such as landscape tracking, travel routes, animal sleeping and feeding areas. Also, he looks at medium-scale sign like rubs, hair or feathers, gnaws and chews, and scat analysis. Relatively speaking, as you can see in these series of drawings, 
it's pretty easy to identify the most common creatures of North America. Now, understanding the subtleties might take a little bit more practice, but you can at least get the right genus. Comparing the footprints of the great apes and humans, the anatomical variances become clear. You can see the obvious evolutionary shifts that had occurred over the centuries. Based on this, the prints of Bigfoot hinted a much closer tie to modern humans than some might have realized. There are variations, with the largest actually being just that, the size. Zeus from the Western Slope Bigfoot Research Organization kindly shared these photos he discovered during his Bigfoot searches across northern Colorado. As you can see, there is a diversity in the imprints he discovered. On the Quatch Track episode covering unidentified noises and vocalizations. Patrick shared and discussed the footprints he found. These footprints were located in the immediate area of the vocalizations, so were highly likely tied to the creature making these sounds. He has found prints throughout the year in these areas, both in summer and winter conditions. Both Keegan and I have encountered prints we were not able to identify. They appear to be from a biped, and the stride was beyond what Keegan could recreate, even with an exaggerated step. Unfortunately, we only took photos and did not have the appropriate gear to record them. However, since then, I've experimented with creating a 3D model in the computer using photo-based photogrammetry. As you see here, the, the model is pretty good, captured details not initially visible. The imprint was made by taking my right foot and pushing it down into the backyard garden soil. I then placed a tape measure next to it and shot 33 photos from various angles, heights, and positions, all on my iPhone. I will note, since I was more focused on the print and not the tape measure, the data capture for it was not detailed enough for its recreation. Armed with this knowledge, both Keegan and myself will capture detailed photos of any future found unidentified prints. And then we will do this cutting edge technology analysis on it. It would not be a stretch for us to enlist the aid of a 3D computer modeler to recreate the foot that made any print we find. What I'm attempting to show here is how snow melt uh, will affect the print. Uh, as it melts, it actually grows out and it gets larger. So with any print that is older and has been there for some time, it is difficult to ascertain the exact size and dimensions that it might have been when originally laid down. We're not sure what Trev will be doing while we take the photos, but I'm sure he can find something to keep himself occupied and entertained. Anyway, we invite you to join Keegan, Trev, and myself on our treks as we search and look to uncover the origins of any gigantic footprints we might encounter. See you guys. Until next time. <laughs>